Hello and welcome to lecture 1, the module introduction for the coaching and performance module. To accompany this lecture, you will need the two handouts that I have previously emailed you. In this unit, we aim to develop your coaching skills in relation to performance coaching. Think back to last year when you were studying the sports coaching module. We were trying to develop your essential basic skills when coaching participants such as children. Now we are trying to develop you so that you can coach athletes of a higher level such as elite athletes. Lyle suggests that performance coaching and participation coaching are different with different characteristics. Think back to when you were young and you were coached by someone who may be a volunteer such as a Saturday morning club. What were they like? How did they coach you? And how did they deal with you? Now think of an elite coach working with athletes such as professional footballers, sprinters, gymnasts and hockey players. How do you think the coaching styles differ between the two coaches? Now please pause the video and read the handout provided. Resume playing when you have read it, made notes on it and make sure you understand it. Figure 3.5 illustrates the increase in intensity, competition and standards when working with more elite athletes compared to recreational participants. It also represents how coaching boundary markers increase when working with more elite athletes. It is important to understand what we class participation coaching as and how we define it. Participation coaching is largely to do with basic skills. For example, between the ages of 6 and 12, a boy may attend a Saturday morning football club where they just do fun games and activities from the coach. In comparison, performance coaching is characterised by intense preparation and participation in competition. For example, a sprinter preparing for the 10, 2012 Olympics. Within this module, you will have two different assessments. For the first assessment, you are required to design a system that will assess sports performance technically or tactically. You will then have to interpret the results you have found. For the second assessment, which is worth 60%, you are required to implement a physiological and psychological training programme. As you can see, the suggested reading list is quite large and you will be required to use these texts quite a lot. You will also need to develop your research skills as these, there are many journal articles relating to the subject area and you're required to use these as much as possible. Now, for your director's study task, you are required to summarise the handout provided. I want you to draw your own conclusions from it, if possible. Remember, this is an ac academic piece of work, therefore grammar, punctuation and referencing should be up to standard. Please email me with any questions. This brings us to the end of the first lecture for this module. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate in contacting me. I look forward to reading your task.